I like the tattoo. Kolla den till vänster. Can you introduce us to the current lineup of Amaranti? Yes, yes of course. Uh, my name is Johan. I play bass in Amaranth and have done that since the beginning, even though most people don't understand, recognize me. <laughs> it's because he grew all his beard yeah. out and sometimes he's yeah. without beard, so nobody recognizes him. Yeah, I was looking in the CD car and I couldn't find you. <laughs> <laughs> is this him or not? Exactly. It's actually, shame. it shaves a lot. Actually, but you uh, have the same almost. Yeah. <laughs> At some points, people don't even recognize me uh, when we do meet and greets. Yeah. <laughs> And here comes the third part. Yep. Hello. I'm, I'm Olaf. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the two classes. Du svarar inte på så att jag... Ja, det är bra. frågar du mig. Passar det? Vilket du svarar? Tobbe skrev ju om... Okej, okay, jag fick inte det. Jag sa att mitt nät var nät. Men slår du nu vi kör alla tre för fan? Do you want us, all three of us? Can you just put another chair? Ja. Yeah, sure. Yep. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Vad var det istället för att fråga, Johan? Nej, men alltså, vi fick ingen svar. Jag fick ingen svar. Fick ingen svar, så Elis får det. Ja, okej. Som du vet, jag kan inte göra som helst. Nej, precis. Det är alltid roligare. Alltså, det är 17 minuter över, men så jag intervju kör vi över. Oj, okej. Okay. All right, let's start over. Så det blev lite stress. Uh, yeah. I guess you can edit it. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Perfect. I understand the band was first named Avalanche. No. Yeah? You had to change the band name because of some legal issues. Yeah, as far as I understand, it was some guy who had a cover band thing. Mm. Yeah, this was when we only recorded like three songs or something. Yeah, so <coughs> in a way yeah but it's, well. it's kind of weird because I looked on the Discogs website, which is a database for music, yeah. and there are at least 35 artists and bands who play under the name Avalanche. Yeah, yeah but, but I think he had a, the, the legal rights for it in Sweden, wasn't it? Exactly, it's like, like music in Sweden. You can't compete oh. if you're in the same category. But it, we could create some other brand in Sweden, prop, like shoes or something, and that would be okay to call it Avalanche. But uh, you were not allowed to use that name. No. Nah. No. Exactly. And luckily, we hadn't made anything on the name yet, so we actually had hadn't done anything wrong. But for him, it looked like oh, we were so I don't know. He probably thought we existed for a longer time and that we were bigger than we actually were back then. So he thought, I can make some money on these yeah, kids. Yeah, he should have money. <laughs> well, perhaps he saw the potential before everyone else. Uh, exactly. Also possible. But now the, the, the band name is Amaranti. I know it's a, a, a very rare French surname, but does, uh, is there an, also another meaning for the choice of this It band actually name? stems from, um, from ancient Greek. There's a word called Amaranthus, and it basically means something that stays young and fresh forever, just like us. Oh yeah. yeah, as you can see. And um, but basically, um, we wanted to create something that was entirely new, like a um, sort of metal or a sort of genre that didn't sound like anything else. And it sort of fitted really nicely to that name. And then again, it has a lot of, like a very nice symmetry to it yeah. as well, with the three A's and everything. So and it re really represents the band in a great way. It's very fun that we always find new things, which is called Emerald. Meanings for it. That yeah, we exactly. didn't know about, like this for example. Can you see this in the camera? Yeah. Show this to Joan. Yeah? I haven't seen him. He will start to become very <laughs> suspicious. Yes. Wow. And, uh, you know, this is, these are things that we, you know, did not know about this name before. But, anyways, uh, there is this um, we had no a idea. Nightwish song called Amaranth. It's all a big coincidence. It's so, all, it is always exactly. hard to find a name that hasn't been used. That's very hard mm. too, actually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And also, I think the name also has a, a meaning of uh, one who never yields, one who never gives up. I think it could certainly mean that as well. Yeah. Oh, well, from now that fits very well with the band. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I understood you were once uh, formed as a project? Sort of, yes. I mean, it wasn't started as a real band from the beginning, so to speak. It was more, more of a fun thing. I would say that probably it wasn't even a project, it was just, you know, friends hanging out and doing fun stuff, so... Kind of like a hobby band. Yeah, sort of. Something on the side. Mm. Uh. Imagine you had to describe the band to someone who has never heard you. How, uh, how would you do that? We w uh. <coughs> I get that question all the time because I have to write press releases for, for the albums and for the tours. And it, you can always change it around a bit. It's very, obviously very hard to describe music in words. Yeah. Like some famous person said that uh, it's sort of like dancing about literature, 
trying to describe a movie or music in words. Yeah, you're familiar with that quote. I think you knew the some other time movie I actually was. But it, it, it's it's a great quote. Though, if I had a, a gun to my head, I guess you could uh, describe it as modern melodic metal with a lot of modern pop influences, and people would still be sort of close to the the idea at least. I think our music has as many descriptions as listeners, actually. That's good. Yeah, it is, because that means that everyone can find their own sort of way into it. Yeah. And they listen to what they, they themselves like. So, n no preconceptioned ideas. When I uh, let a friend of mine listen to the Nexus, his first reply was, wow. If Ava had been a power metal band, they could have sounded like this. And it reminded him of the Eurovision Song Festival. Well, that's something we get a lot too. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Indeed. Somehow it's uh, been like that for us. I don't know if it's because we have a lot of role models like Abba, for example, or, you know, since we're Swedish and we have, like, maybe that's where it comes the from. The pop element, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, the songs are usually three minutes also, so, which means that we could sing, send every song to the yeah. <laughs> in competition. I noticed on the Japanese edition of your first album, there were two bonus tracks on it. Mm. One was called Breaking Point and one was called Splinter in My Soul. Mm. Weren't those tracks that were recorded before on a very early demo? No, actually they were recorded on the same session as uh, the rest of the album. We yes, just had, 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 had many songs and some, somehow along the road we just figured that the other 12 were their stronger tracks somehow. Now that I listen back to it, I might not be of the same opinion. but. That's always the case when you're looking back at something. But no, no, I think that Splinter in My Soul was the third song that we ever written, actually. Yeah, I remember that. Or so it might even very have been the one. So it's, a, it's, yeah, I think Enter the Maze was like the first song, <laughs> and the second song was probably Splinter in My Soul. So it was there from the very beginning, yeah. but it, it was also very different from all the other tracks. Mm -hmm. So, but it's a, it's a cool one. And I really like Breaking Point as well. So. Oh, yeah. Me too. Good songs. Uh, who within the band is the composer of the songs? It's been uh, me, Elise and uh, Jake working on the music for the albums. Okay. Can you tell me how a, a song of uh, the band gets created? Well, the song Do you of make Ooh. something and get it's that It's from everybody's strong will to get their ideas into the song. And a lot of coffee. Yes, a lot of coffee. <laughs> exactly. And what uh, else can I Adrenaline, no, sugar. Rush. Sugar Rush. No, but it's like Olaf has his taste, I have my taste, Jake has his taste, and we put everything together, and I guess that's what creates the Amaranth sound. But also, uh, I think he's more specifically talking about a song itself. Which, which song? A song. Any, Any song. Ooh. Like when you go to the studio, do you already have the complete song finished and you can record it, or do you sometimes <coughs> have when you're at the studio, hey, this is also good to use, and then make it in the studio? I think we have a more like... Sometimes we finish songs in the studio and sometimes yeah. we don't. Or sometimes, like you say, we change things. Like, ah, this chorus isn't like catchy enough. And then we just like change the melody, you know, at, at in, in the studio. Yeah, that did you find out you, you can do it in another way? Exactly, but that happened with probably like two songs or something. Oh, on every album. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Currently you're working on a... The, the new album that's coming up, I believe this year? No, no, we're actually it's finished done. working on it. You already finished this? Yeah, yeah like the master has been sent in before. since yeah. two days ago, so we're not working at all on it. So Is there something you can already tell us about it? Yeah, oh, uh. hell is going to break loose. <laughs> yep. We're going to piss off a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> yep, no, that's the trade that we are in. I mean, in so many ways it's a very, very different album and then, uh, of course artists always say that because in their perspective it's all always really, really different but the difference this time around is that any, anybody that we played it to reacts really strongly to it because it is really different and it goes in a lot of different directions which has always been the cool thing about writing music for, for this band is that there are so many influences that there are also so many paths that you can go because if you are a 70s nostalgia ACDC sort of kind of band, it's really hard to suddenly go in a different direction, you're going to lose all your fans. But the thing is that I think that our fans are already quite open-minded, which puts, puts us as songwriters 
and as a band in a really, really cool. Your music is also wider, position. more genres. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if we have five different genres and a lot of different directions within those genres that we can go to, then we have a lot of different options. <clears throat> so with, with, with this album, it's, it's certainly by far the most diverse thing that we have done. And maybe not everybody will like it, but I think that most people will probably appreciate the effort that we put into the album. I think we're looking forward to it. Absolutely. As I said, we're going to piss off a lot of people, both in good and bad ways. We're mostly probably inspired. Uh, who, who produced it? Uh, Jacob Hansen and uh, also Jacob Herman. That's true. Who hasn't been involved before. So this, this time we recorded half the album in Gothenburg. Sort of out of convenience, but also because Jacob Herman is a phenomenal producer for the drums and, and the guitars bass. and the bass. So uh, that turned out really well, and then we took it back to, uh, to Jacob, and he put his magical touch on it with the vocals and the mix and the mastering. So, Cool. I uh, read somewhere you're going to it with the Temptation Zone in North America. I think it was promotion for this album. Oh, Actually, that was two years ago, for the last time. Oh, I thought I read somewhere there was going to be another uh, tour oh, with them. Oh, no, 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 at least not that I know of. Okay, <laughs> then you know more I than would, we I got so uh, happy when you said that. I was yeah, like, really? Yeah, it would really? be phenomenal. Uh, yeah, we went on a tour uh, in North America in the uh, yeah. fall of 2014. Uh, uh, we're going soon uh, on tour in October with the Sonic Syndicate and Smashing to Pieces. But that's yeah. in uh, okay. Europe. Yeah. Yeah, it's a European tour. So we're gonna to come promote here. a new album. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yes. You will also be in the Netherlands then? We will on the 26th of October. We play in Ney something. Nijmegen. 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 Yeah. Nijmegen. Yeah. Nijmegen. Cool. So we hope to see some. Yeah. <laughs> there. Read all about it. Come there. Next question is especially for you. I read you are, besides uh, the band, also the face of something called proactive. Oh, oh yeah. What is proactive? It's actually a skin uh, uh, treatment program for like acne. It's not. It's not for acne. It's for like if you have like dirty pores and like pimples or something. It has this special product which is not, you don't need medicational papers to use it, but it's really good to clean the skin. And if, but if you would have really bad acne, you would probably need to go to the doctor. But it's, it's a cleaning, yeah, anti pimple uh, cream. Uh, wash, wash and, okay. and cream. Anti pimp thing? <laughs> no, but it's actually really good. I use it a lot since we, I use makeup and it, we tour and it's a good way to keep the skin like good. <laughs> and besides me, they have Justin Bieber and uh, wait, Adam, Adam, Levine. Five, Adam Levine are doing commercials for them in the US. Okay, that's a good company. And, yeah, no, so, so I thought that, like maybe we could have a meeting somewhere, all of us. Yeah, but it's, 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 it probably exists here too, it's like worldwide. I heard of the name, but I never knew what it exactly <laughs> was. So I thought, why not ask the face of Yeah. Yeah, I'm on TV pre pre pretty often then. If you live in Sweden, you can that. Ah, I will. <laughs> Last question. Yeah. Future plans besides making music? Making kids? <laughs> 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 making kids? Making kids? We're going to practice, we're going to actually make them. Uh, both. Oh, beware. Future plans besides music. Uh, you always say it so eloquently. Yeah, of course, when it comes to music, uh, the closest plan is to have Iron Maiden as an opening act. I think that we start uh, low scale and then we kick it up. Besides music, then? And world domination, don't forget world, world domination. And world, world domination, but that comes with the territory of having an Iron Maiden opening for us. Uh, and besides music, uh, to stay out of trouble. <laughs> Moving to Finland, probably. <coughs> I've done that. Yeah, he's done that already, and now he... I guess you would like the rest of us to come there, right? Yeah, it would be nice. And of course, it's really important for us to have as many people as possible to, to join our army, so we can take over the world as well. I'm really happy to see that you joined the army, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> but nice you, you should... You 
also want your castle from uh, in Holland, right? Uh, of course, of course. The Dutch castles are nice. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for the interview. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>